All right, Alec, I think uh, we have uh, quite a few people logged in right now. So let's get started. Sure. Great. Hello, everyone. My name is Rahul. Uh, I work here in my school page as a project manager, and I will be your host for this webinar. Thanks all for joining. Um, so what we're planning here is to start uh, the first in a series of monthly webinars. We're going to be bringing you guests who can inspire students to do more and achieve more. Uh, they're basically going to be experts in their own fields. So you're definitely going to find these sessions useful. Uh, the first guest that we have here is uh, Alexander Geski. He's a first year PhD graduate student studying neuroscience at Johns Hopkins University. Um, he's got a varied background. He's worked in retail as an employee of uh, Dunkin' Donuts and then Baskin Robbins. He's also worked in delivery as well. Right? So his goal is to uh, ultimately teach in academia and to continue uh, research and mechanisms underlying pain and itch. So uh, we're super excited that you've decided to join us. Uh, welcome, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Great. Great. Uh, so just before we get started, to everyone who's watching, uh, I would like to say that we are going to be recording this webinar just in case you miss a part of it or you want to share it with your friends and family later. Uh, we will be uh, sending you an email with the link of the webinar after this is over. Right. Great. So, Alec, let's get started. Um, so we have a lot of questions and we will be taking questions from the uh, the listeners as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So first question I have is that uh, I know you've achieved really high levels of academic success. Uh, you're working to get your PhD in one of the world's best universities. So tell us how this journey started. Did you have any idea uh, when you were in middle school that you're going to end up here? Yeah, so I would probably say, no, I would not expect to be doing my PhD in neuroscience when I was when I was uh, in middle school. but. I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. I, mm -hmm. um, I had always had interest in science, though that interest morphed over the years into um, different obsessions that I tried to pursue. But uh, I think a lot had to happen for me to end up where I was, where I am currently, um, and. I had always had this, I think I, knowing that I'd be relieved that I was able to make it to this academic institution because I had these older brothers and this pressure that mm -hmm. I um, should achieve as much academic success as they had. Um, and that was one of the motivations that sort of kept me going, but specifically to end up at Hopkins, I think there are a couple things that um, critically happened throughout my high school career that led me to choosing Hopkins. Um, so to, to start out, um, I always, as I said, had an interest in science and I can get more into my background um, later as well. And I uh, signed up for this course called Honor Science Research, and it was sort of my first uh, hands-on experience with research, and that's what I'm doing now. I do research in pain and itch, something I also would not have expected to be in um, in any way. Um, but through that class, I ended up just contacting a professor at a, um, a nearby university, which happened to be Yale, and I was very um, happy to uh, have the opportunity to work with a postdoc there at Yale on a project and um, in a field that you know I I have no interest in anymore. Um, it was actually in fracking um, and this chemical they use. Uh, it's an environmental science issue, um, but that sort of led me on the path to considering research as an actual job because I saw other um, people in the field of academia mm -hmm. and it seemed interesting to kind of surround yourself with learning um, as a job 
Um, so yeah, that, that was the first experience in high school that led me to that. Um, but I think earlier on, what really solidified my um, interest in science in some factor was uh, probably my father and uh, my brothers sort of, uh, I, I used to go to New York City um, multiple times uh, throughout the year to hear different talks um, from, you know, uh, reputable people. So yeah, and uh, it's like things like the Isaac Asimov debate um, where they get the brightest minds in science and they address interesting questions. After those debates, I'd always be incredibly motivated. And it's about uh, maintaining that motivation past just a couple days after the talk, but I learned that through, throughout time. Um, and to end up at Hopkins, uh, I, in a way, I benefited from having older brothers because I got to see a lot of different schools before looking at schools myself. But um, <laughs> no one had visited Hopkins, and I visited it, and it was kind of clear early on that um, my interest that I sort of uh, um, learned about th throughout high school really aligned with uh, Hopkins um, and their motto. And it was, um, it's the oldest academic research institution for um, in the United States. And that was very attractive to me. And uh, I applied their early decision. So that's a system here where I kind of am showing that I want to go there more than any, any other place. Um, and when, yeah, so once I got in, I knew I was committed. Um, and to be at Hopkins still, I wouldn't have expected that to be doing my PhD in neuroscience. Um, it took some further exploring and further um, taking opportunities in research to know whether that was something I wanted to do. Um, and mm -hmm. I was able to get those research opportunities because of the institution I, um, uh, I ended up joining, research, uh, Hopkins. And they have uh, plenty, a plethora of research for the students to, to kind of dive into. So I, I, I kind of set myself on that path early, um, but mm -hmm. I always was considering um, whether I'd see it as an actual job. So that, that, that was important to me. Okay. Uh, what's really great is that you've ended up doing what you love, right? right. Yes. That's, that's really fantastic. Right. Yeah. Um, so Alec, just so that our audience can relate better uh, to you, I'd like to ask you how you were as a kid. Uh, were you a regular kid just like all of us? Did you get in trouble with teachers? What sports did you play? You know, can, can you tell us more about that side of you? Yeah, yeah. And I, I certainly, to this day, um, think I'm, you know, especially when I was younger, I, I didn't think I stood out academically or anything. And mm -hmm. I felt like uh, I always had to push myself to, to achieve certain things. But over time, I learned that wasn't necessarily the case. But uh, so as a kid, I was a, a shyer, shyer boy. And <coughs> so I didn't necessarily get in trouble that often. I was very nice and shy and sort of let, uh, just tried not to offend anyone like that sort of thing. Um, and that also meant um, I was shy of taking certain opportunities sometimes and definitely uh, would be shy to uh, do something like this even. Um, but it, it was over time that I sort of gained confidence. Um, as I was uh, saying before, I have two older brothers and a father that really encouraged science early on. He was an amateur astronomer and that sort of stuff is fascinating to a kid. So I think Great. he, he got all of us into the more like tantalizing aspects of science. 
um, the stars, like being an astronaut, I never seriously considered doing that, but it was always very inspiring. Um, and that sort of bled into all other aspects of um, science as a career and how the pursuit for that sort of knowledge um, I began to admire rather early on. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what was important is that that motivation and interest was maintained and encouraged. And that was through my family for sure. But also, um, I found a number of mentors um, throughout my life and throughout middle school, high school, and uh, college that enabled me to stay motivated in that, in that field. Um, but yes, as a kid, I think, and I, I needed that motivation as well. Um, that was sort of how I worked. If I was left alone to my own intentions, um, I, because of how shy I was, I might not be, I don't think I would have been as ambitious if I didn't have these outside things pushing me as much. Um, and if I were to say one or two words about finding a mentor earlier on, I think you could consider even the group of friends you surround with or the people you meet in clubs. Um, those functioned as mentors to me. They, um, through their own ambitions and their own aspects of them that I admired, um, I, at least for me, that motivated me to do as well as them. So there, there's a little friendly competition, but I think that played a big role in pushing me out of my comfort zone as a shy kid. Um, and yeah, uh, I also, I played sports. I was initially tennis tennis player, um, but then in middle school, I switched over to squash um, because I got, I tried it and I thought it was so much fun. Um, and I ended up getting pretty involved in comp competitions, even at middle school. Um, and luckily I grew up in the Northeast where squash was somewhat relevant um, and continued to do this in high school. And um, now I can say a little about just uh, the clubs I was a part of in high school. And I think that was very important to where I ended up now um, being a well-rounded candidate and such. So I, I was part of this, uh, the club the squash club team. It was a weird situation at my school. It wasn't quite a club or a team, so they didn't call that club. Um, and I ended up being the uh, the captain of the JV team. So that's sort of the secondary mm -hmm. team. Um, but I'm glad I was on that secondary team. I could have very easily ended up on the eighth position on the first team. And I think that loses a lot of the opportunities to show off leader leadership which is a critical thing that I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone for. And it's something that school grew up very much about. And then the, the two other clubs I was part of were um, the science team where we went to competitions, which shouldn't be surprising based off my interest that, that I was part of that. Um, and uh, lastly, I was the editor in chief of the literary magazine there, literary. Um, and that's definitely out of my comfort zone completely. I'm not a great writer, but um, I got into that club after talking to my English teacher when I needed help. And editing was different. It, it was, I still appreciated good literature and good writing. And uh, I ended up, just because of my obvious interest or dedication to that club, um, mm -hmm. I was able to get that position. It wasn't necessarily through a skill alone for the job. It was more, I showed interest and I was committed to uh, showing up and such. But uh, overall that led to me becoming well-rounded. And uh, I think that would have surprised me when I was younger because I was de I would definitely shy away from certain opportunities. Uh -huh. It's really interesting. Some of the things that you mentioned about, you know, they're, they're so key to a student developing well, uh, 
one is definitely mentorship right uh, if your family can nurture you that's the, one of the most important things that can happen the other one you mentioned was about um, getting out of your comfort zone right like like you did repeatedly those are really good tips it's fantastic so uh, alec i see that we have quite a lot of questions coming in from our viewers can we get on to those now yes yeah yeah i think i yeah great okay, okay. um uh, so right uh, first question is did you take any ap courses to get a head start on your college education yeah uh i did i took ap chemistry ap us history and um <clears throat> ap uh it, it was it's not quite your european history but something along that lines i didn't quite get to take ap physics um because physical physics was a weak point for me uh huh. but i would say that all of those courses were definitely worth taking mm -hmm. um and the uh ap exams that we took at the end at least in my case that didn't necessarily affect my grade in high school um but the actual number i think was useful for me getting into hopkins whether i could use the credit like you can with some classes mm -hmm. you can use the college credit um i didn't uh get to do that um but just in general i would say if you have the opportunity to take the highest level course mm -hmm. um it's always i think it's always beneficial to take um these ap courses uh and yeah 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 uh just because um grades are very important in taking the um, most reputable classes are is always good yeah yeah makes sense makes sense so all right uh, here's another question right? and this is interesting and i think you'd be the right person to answer this so there's a parent who uh, says that her kid is in the seventh grade right uh, and she's very studious but her peers sometimes uh, stay away from her right saying that she's a little too intelligent mm -hmm. um, ha have you ever had that kind of uh, if i can call it positive discrimination done towards mm -hmm. you and how how do you react it's it's a classic case of somebody calling you a nerd and you know uh, yes not not including you in that group yeah i know i understand what you mean um mm -hmm. i think that sort of positive di discrimination is uh certainly harmful and it's not really fair um and for me um where i really grew out of that i wasn't necessarily i didn't get um bullied a lot in middle school or anything mm -hmm. um but in high school where i just began to meet more people i was in a relatively big high school i just made sure to surround myself with people with similar interests and once again that played into them helping me stay motivated um and i would uh, certainly not want to be friends with someone that just did not like uh, saw me as a nerd and didn't really understand me um so in that case i would say if they're you know still um good friends friends that you want to have it mm -hmm. seems like they just need a better better understanding of who you are if they just put pin you into this little group of being too intelligent and such and such um if they knew uh your story and sort of like i'm telling you my story now mm -hmm. and i can't see how they would continue to uh, treat you that way so i wouldn't say like push those friends away necessarily but i would say try to um have a one on one or make them or or tell them your story um because positive dis discrimination is not um it is something that's going to make doing well seem 
that. Um, so I, and that's certainly, that's not the case at all. And there's nothing wrong with being intelligent or motivated. Um, so I don't know if there's also competition um, aspect to that, that um, friends are competitive, but uh, yeah, I think having a, a one, one to one honest conversation um, is important because I think friends are important for sure. Yep, that makes sense. And that brings us back to another point that uh, you mentioned, which is surround yourself with people who uh, get the best out of you. Right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's very important. Yes. Right? All right, uh, questions keep flowing in. Uh, here's another one. What subjects did you find difficult to get good grades in? Yeah, and how did you get around that? You mentioned physics, so yes. uh, how did you get around that? Yeah, so it was, it was, uh, it just, it felt like it came harder to me. Um, like uh, that with chemistry, I happened to do very well and it didn't, it wasn't stressful. And I wouldn't say it was any more difficult, but it just came to me a little better. And I think over the years, I've realized that <clears throat> with physics and it turns out chemistry in college became somewhat difficult for me. Um, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of the fundamentals. You don't want to get lost. Um, you can quickly get confused by one thing. And if you don't address it soon enough, the course will build further and further upon different concepts that build upon each other. And it gets very hard to study for anything um, because you don't know where to start. But um, I've noticed for me, and with physics, it's definitely applied. I needed to go all the way back and understand the fundamentals and go through it slowly um, just so I made all the connections I need to made and make in order to um, conceptually understand the problems. Because understanding um, how to solve a problem requires understanding um, all the background information. So just, just studying like problems for an exam um, hurt me a little bit in a, uh, an honors physics course I took. So I, I really needed to, to study the textbook and the, the uh, fundamentals of that. <clears throat> and yeah, with chemistry ended up being a similar thing in college where there's chemistry and there's neuroscience. And neuroscience came a lot easier to me. Um, and that difference was more an interest difference. I was more interested in neuroscience. It was easier to study, um, but uh, the the understanding the fundamentals and not getting lost is pretty critical. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with you. So there are a lot of our students as well. Uh, they when when they come and get tutored by by us, uh, it's the first thing that we try to focus on to just get their fundamentals strong, and and you can build on that, right? And there's no limit to what you can do once you have those fundamentals strong. Completely agree. Uh, all right, here's another question. Uh, yeah, there's a person who's asking us um, how you'd stay away from, uh, or not stay away from, how you uh, stay away from getting distracted by social media, games, and, and this whole thing that's surrounding us now. How do you stay focused? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's certainly something I dealt with um, middle school, high school, and is mm -hmm. yeah, more present now. Um, and I would say that as I grew older, um, I was, I didn't really have, I had fewer and fewer restrictions, um, but I think it was important to me to have certain restrictions or to be watched um, over by both my parents and my brothers um, to make sure I wasn't slacking off because of games or because of anything of that sort. 
but I would say I, uh, once you have the responsibility for yourself, it's on you. Um, and I would say I had that in high school and college. Uh, I didn't, I valued um, free time and a balance between work life and free time. And uh, it's good to um, have that opportunity maybe in high school, but definitely in college, because even now, it's, a, it's difficult to balance work life and your personal free time. Um, I would say it's more so in my job because my job is very flexible. It's not a normal nine to five. And I have to sort of figure things out for myself um, how I most efficiently um, work on my projects. Uh, but I would say with social media, I, that was never something I got too much into, but games and all of that, those sort of distractions. Um, I think it's important to um, push those things off when there are big um, tasks at hand, when you have a lot of homework, like weekdays and such. Mm -hmm. um, definitely when you're younger in middle school or high school. I think I, think I required some discipline um, because then later on when I was in high school, I had the freedom to play games when I wanted or do any of that. But just this internal stress that I developed, I could only enjoy that sort of thing, that free time, when it was justified to have that free time. Yeah. Um, and that when I got certain things done. But I still think that there's a value and a balance. Um, it, you, if you work all the time and you get stressed, um, you really need to manage that stress with um, some sort of fun at some point. Uh, although I will say some people can handle that different than others. Um, mm -hmm. And it, you can sort of recognize for yourself whether mentally you need, like how much you need to manage your stress and how much free time you'll need. But um, it's important to find that threshold or find that balance at some point in your career. Um, so you need the freedom for that at some point. Okay. So there's another question that relates to what we were just talking about, which is how do you motivate yourself, right? So finding that balance between stress and, and doing your work, that's one thing. Uh, but then how do you motivate yourself to get back into the zone? Yes. Um, I think uh, the easiest way to motivate yourself is to pursue an interest that you're actually sort of dedicated in. And so finding that interest is um, another issue. And I'd say you should get involved and maybe read books and seek out opportunities. Like I went to uh, a lot of talks in New York City from very um, interesting people and that solidified my interest in those fields. Um, and you can sort of reflect to yourself. Um, for me, like that interest in neuroscience. Um, it's good to know, like the day to day doesn't have to be super fun, but at the, um, at the end of the day, the core of what you're doing should be something that makes you proud, um, something that can keep you going. Um, and I think if you have that sort of interest, Mm -hmm. The motivation will come with it. And I, I think uh, there are a lot of people that I've met throughout my life that haven't quite figured that out for themselves yet. And it, it, it doesn't, it's not easy to find that. But um, the way to do it is by um, getting experience in things like this, hearing from people in the field, mm -hmm. um, seeing if, um, it's something you really believe in. Um, and then on top of that, uh, just having good mentors in college, I found good mentors in my field that I really respected. And at that point, it was like for sure solidified by that. Um, okay. All right. Um, Alec, uh, it's already been 30 minutes. 
So uh, if you have time for like maybe two or three more questions, we can quickly shoot those. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. All right. So this, this next question actually ties into what you were just talking about, right? So the gist of your last answer is, is that you need to find something that you love doing. Right? Mm -hmm. So that, that keeps you motivated inherently. Mm -hmm. So here's a student who's asking this question. Think, how do you, uh, how, how does one gauge one's interest mm -hmm. and then discover what they really like? And mm -hmm. how do you choose that career path? Is there is there any way of thinking about this? Any particular way that you you thought about it for yourself? Yeah, um, I would say sort of similar to what I was saying before, in that uh, the um, the core of the job or the core of what I wanted to, to do, wanted to do, which was research and academia um should be motivating in some way it should inspire you it should um make you uh it um uh, it should enable you to get past the, the day to day stresses so um with research there's a not a, a lot of monotony um but at the end of the day uh, you you will end up making bigger strides over time, and I sort of have always been inspired about con contributing to that field. Um, and really, how you do that, uh, it's it's critical to get opportunities with people in that field. Uh, um, in middle school and high school, obviously, you won't be able to do everything to know that you would enjoy that job, but you can speak to people or find mentors in that field, internships or volunteering opportunities. I'd say clubs are very, very good. Um, and you can see whether that's something, it, it's like a profession you respect. If you respect that profession, that's a good sign. Um, and if you can um, imagine yeah, it's it's certainly a difficult thing to find what job is most motivating for you. Um, but if you'll know that um, it is a, a good job for you if the core of it is interesting, it is um, respectable and inspiring. Um, so I would say, yeah, talks like this with people um, specifically in your field. I went to these Isaac Asimov debates. I heard from people in many different, very interesting scientific fields and uh, was able to dip my toe in a lot of different areas um, to see what inspired me the most. Um, but that's that fantastic. Yeah. Great, that, that's really interesting. Uh, all right, Alec, we have time for just two more questions, right? Uh, this one's easy, time management. How do you do it? Like, you know, kids these days, they have school, they have probably music classes and sports, and then need to spend time with friends. So how do you manage all your time and still get that much of studying done so that you are a good success? Yeah. So, I would say the best uh, for time management, the best thing is to get a system going with uh, the classes you have at hand. Um, for me, it, it all depends on like what courses you're taking and your workload. Um, mm -hmm. But and uh, normally with classes, you'll have assignments due like maybe on a Friday or a Thursday and you kind of create your schedule around that. My schedule was always changing in college because of the radically different courses and workload. Um, and an interesting thing is I didn't have homework in a lot of my courses. It was just studying. So that gave me a lot more leeway, but also a lot more responsibility to manage my time. And um, time man management also depends on 
your method of studying. And that can be a little more personal or individual focused. Um, but for me, I just require reviewing. So I would, after each course, just review after each lecture, um, review the lecture once, uh, taking notes again. And then before the exams, I would review the lectures again. It was a very basic system, but for all my neuroscience courses, that worked. It was just reviewing it over and over and managing that with um, work uh, with friends and other activities. Like I played the violin and um, all these other clubs. Um, it can get overwhelming, but I would try not to make any one semester particularly overloaded with all these activities. Um, when you're applying to college, you'll get to um, include all your uh, academic opportunities over throughout high school. <coughs> so there's no need for each semester to have all of these things in there um, because that can get overwhelming. But uh, yeah. So getting a system going with the workload that you have. And uh, for me, my knowing your study method um, is sort of critical to time management. Um, yeah, it's, it, and in high school, so you're sort of getting to know your own study method. So just know you're kind of learning that as well. Um, and don't get too stressed if, you're finding something doesn't work with you. Just try something new and see if that does. But yeah. I think that's fantastic advice. Great. Um, is there anything that you do differently, right? What if you woke up one morning and find, found that you're a high school student again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I would say my grades were, were good but they weren't necessarily astounding. I could have tried uh, harder and some of the like courses that I struggled with. I know now that understanding the fundamentals was important. I don't think mm -hmm. I applied that advice early on enough. Um, and I would also say that um, throughout college, I regret um, sort of I focused on my classes, but um, I took my career path for granted sometimes, and I didn't um, talk to my advisor quite enough um, so that I felt confident when I started applying for PhD programs. That whole process was suddenly, um, there were a lot of new things I had to um, get accustomed with and I don't think I really checked in enough with my advisor about that. In high school I think I was good about that because I had a great advisor that really checked in with me, kind of took the opportunity to check in with me, but I don't think I uh, myself um, uh, decided to uh, check in with the bigger picture um, of my career path. And uh, I had good mentors, but you have to make sure to utilize them often. So I think I would have used them more than I have now um, up to this point. Yeah. Great. OK. That's a lot of good takeaways uh, for everyone who's listening. Um, so we've run out of time, Alec. Uh, so I'll, I'll wrap this up. Uh, myself and the team at my school page really appreciate your time here. Right? Thank you so much for answering all of these questions. Uh, it was fantastic learning from you. Okay. Right? Thank, you. Yeah. Thank, you thank you so much. And uh, to everyone listening in, thanks for logging in. Uh, have a good evening. And if you're logging in from the US, have a good day. All right. Bye-bye.